Welcome to the electronicshobbyblog.com. Today we're going to continue working on our resistor substitution box. We'll define the specifications for the various components, and then we'll search for those components online and place an order. So let's get started. First, let's look at the various components we're going to need. We'll need a caser enclosure, some binding posts to connect to the box, six rotary switches. We've already discussed those in some detail. We'll talk more about those. We need some knobs. Those will fit on the rotary switches and make them easy to turn. And then we need the various resistors that are going to form the decade box itself. So talking about the case, let's look at the specs for each of these. So for the case, we want a case that's big enough to house all our components comfortably and also something that's going to be easy to work on. Ideally, we'd like it to have a detachable front panel so that we could get it all assembled and then work on it from the back of the switches and just drop it into place. And so we'll take a look and do some searches for some cases. I think that six by four by two is about the appropriate size. We'll also look for some binding posts. We'll need at least two binding posts for the input and the output to the resistors. Um, what we, the only real catch here is that we want to pick binding posts that will allow us to keep them insulated from the case. Now, it won't be a problem if we pick a plastic case, but I like a good sturdy metal case. And so um, I'll be looking for binding posts that allow me to insulate them from the case itself. Um, also, because resistors don't have any polarity, and neither will our decade substitution box, we don't necessarily need to use red and black or any particular color of binding posts. So if we want to get a little colorful, we can. In fact, we won't even need to label them. Next are rotary switches. We've already talked about those in some detail, but we've got one more specification to talk about, and that's the current. So we need 10 position, one pole, one deck rotary switches. But what about the current handling? Well, we know that we want our box to be three watts power. The worst case current condition will occur when we have maximum power and minimum resistance. And for us, minimum resistance is gonna be one ohms. So that means that we need to figure out our current and current from Ohm's Law, if you look at the, the uh, Ohm's Law quick view on our resistor circuits post, then you know that current is equal to the square root of power over resistance. And so what that means is we got our three watts and our one ohm, and so our power, our maximum current is going to be equal to the square root of three. So I equals square root of three, and that's approximately equal to 1.7 amps. So we'll add that specification to our um, rotary switches. So we want a minimum of 1.7 amps. And in fact, we'll use two amps just to be safe. The other thing you need to keep in mind is that the three watts of power that we're talking about for our resistors and for our overall box, that's only three watts when we have a single resistor selected. Remember, each resistor is going to be a three watt resistor. So if we've got multiple resistors selected based on our dial settings, then each of the resistors is three watts and our total power is going to be a little better than three watts. So for instance, if we have two one ohm resistors selected and they're both at three watts current rating, then each one can handle three watts. So the total we can handle is six watts. And because the resistors are equal in value, the current and of course the power will be distributed equally across them. That, that's not the case if we've got a 100K resistor and a one ohm resistor selected. The power distribution is going to be much different. So although when we have more than one resistor selected in the, based on our dial settings, the power is greater than three watts, we want to set an absolute maximum power on this of three watts. So just keep that in mind. So our knobs, 
So we want a nice professional looking product. And, and because of that, I, personally, I'm going to choose a metal enclosure for mine, an extruded aluminum enclosure, uh, which I happen to like and also happen to have. But we want it to look really nice. So we want some nice graphics on the front, or we at least don't want a whole bunch of little things stuck on willy nilly to label things. So, you know, how are we going to do that? Well, well, one way is we could get some custom water slide decals made, or we could make our own on a printer, buy some decal paper and make our own um, water slide decals. The problem with that is it tends to be very expensive. The decal paper itself is about $25 for five sheets. And if you order custom water slide decals, they cost about $100 for an eight and a half by 11 sheet. And that includes the setup and a couple of copies of the, of the decal itself. So, so quite expensive. Um, so the best way to make it look professional is going to be to minimize what we need to put on there. Well, one way we can do that is by making sure we select knobs that have numbers on it. And then it'll be fairly easy to read the resistor value with having, without having to add any graphics to the case itself. So we'll look specifically for knobs with numbers on them. And then what we can do is just put a little tick line at the top of each dial along with the multiplier. So for instance, whether it's times 1 ohm, times 10 ohms, times 100 ohms, and so on. And that'll minimize the amount of graphics that we've got to add to the, display, to the, um, excuse me, to the panel itself so we can keep it more professional looking. Um, and then finally, we need our resistors themselves. And we need uh, resistors that are 3 watts, 1%. And one thing we want to add is axial leads. Because we're going to be soldering these directly to the switches themselves, um, we want to have the leads be axial, which means that the leads will come out of the ends of the resistor like that. And that'll allow us to solder these and fit them in the case uh, much more easily. And we're going to need nine each of 1, 10, 100, 1 kilo ohm, 10 kilo ohm, and 100 kilo ohm at 3 watts, 1% tolerance. Uh, what you're going to find when we go over to the computer and start searching is that you often get a price break when you order 10 of a particular resistor value. And so we'll order 10 instead of 9. It'll cost us almost exactly the same price. In some cases, it might even be a little cheaper to order 10, but uh, we'll have an extra resistor just in case we need it. So that's what we're going to do. Let's head over to the computer and start searching for our parts. Let's take a look at ordering some of our components. And I'm going to start on Amazon with the case. And I happen to know what kind of case I like. So I'm going to pick electronic, or search for electronic enclosure. And I want an aluminum electronic enclosure. And you can see there's quite a few options here. There'll be a lot of these. Um, what we need to find is something that's about 6 inches by 4 inches by 2 inches, which will give us plenty of room for our case. And I'm going to go a little bit more expensive. You can find something a little less expensive, but I, wanna, I like a really nice solid case. And so I'm going to pick this case here. So that's the, that's the case I like. Um, you can see here that that will be fairly easy to assemble. So we can simply take that top plate out here, and then we can um, drill our holes, mount our, wire up our switches, mount them, then wire them together. And we can choose to put the binding posts either on the top of the case or on one of these metal side panels. So that's the one, uh, that's the one I want. I've actually bought that before I've got that one on my shelf. So it's another reason I'm picking it, so I can use it. Now let's look for knobs. And I'm going to put rotary switch knobs. And if you've read the article, you know I found these already. Um, I'm not seeing exactly what I want. Um, there is a link to it in the article. 
So if you go to the particular post slash article on www.theelectronicshobbyblog.com, you'll be able to find the exact link to what we're looking for. Let's try knobs numbered electronic and see there's uh, two similar here we go customer who viewed this item also viewed so these are these are the ones I picked so uh, we were able to find those on Amazon they're a decent price at uh, 1099 with free delivery and um, looking at the more detailed photos they have that brass insert with the set screw which will come in fairly handy um, these are about a half inch across at the bottom um, and then a little less than a half inch across on the actual knob itself and the really nice thing about this is they're labeled zero to nine which is exactly how our resistors are going to go from zero to nine so um, i thought they were perfect fit so um, i'll go real quick and look at binding posts colors just wanted something a little more interesting um, these kinds of posts would be just for banana jacks and those would be fine um, these would be fine as well but you want to get some that are going to be insulated from the case so here are the ones i think i picked um, i like the fact that they come in multiple colors um, i like the fact that you get 20 of them um, so i'll have them for other projects as well um, and i've actually purchased these before um, not through Amazon, but from another site, and um, they're fine. They, they'll work. They'll work well. Um, let's take a look at how we do a parametric search for our switches. So I'm on the Arrow website. Let's do it this way. Probably a little easier to start out typing in rotary switch and see what comes up. So under rotary switch, here we go. We'll narrow it down a little bit. To switch rotary and at the point where we do that we should get some parametric uh, options here to choose from that's good and we're gonna choose in stock we'll go over to our number of positions and we can hold down the control excuse me we can hold down I'm on a Mac so um, hold down the shift key to select multiple choices and then we need our current we'd said we need it to be two amps or better so we'll pick 2.5 and we'll scroll down and we'll take five as well um, and you notice how other options are changing because some things aren't available given the choices we've already made so if we click apply here you'll see we quickly go from a little over 2700 product to just 14. And if I come down, I can now start looking at these different products. And so we'll see this first one um, is a rotary switch. Sorry, I was down a little bit. Um, yeah, first one is a 12 position rotary switch. You know what? Let's sort by price. And so now we're sorting price low to high. And the first one is one that you use a screwdriver to set. So um, we're not going to pick that one, but this is the one that I picked. It's um, 10 position, 2.5 amps, 125 volts AC. Um, it's a non-shorting switch. I know that because I looked, pop in, and we'll look at the data sheet, and you can see that it says non-shorting right here. And so that's the one I picked, and I uh, we're going to need six of those. And, and to be honest with you, I looked at a couple of websites in preparing to record this, so we wouldn't have to jump all over the place. And this was for those type of switches, it's the best best ones I found. The shaft is a little long, but that's okay. We can cut that down. And just to, just a demo, I'm going to go over to the Mauser site, and we'll do the same thing. We'll look for rotary switch.
And here it is on the Mauser site. And we're going to, apparently it found a couple of things that had uh, what it looked like rotary switch in it. And so we'll go to switches. That'll narrow it down quite a bit. It's thinking about it. There we go. And then once we get to switches, we'll be able to narrow it down to rotary switches. And you can see here that the Mauser site actually has 16,000 choices. So we're definitely going to want to narrow this down. So we're going to come over here. And with that many choices, I, since we can compare it to the other site, I'm just going to pick the 10 position, single deck, single pole, Two point five amps, and we'll pick the five amp one as well. And you see, we've already narrowed it down to there. There are only three um, within our um, parameters. So I, I'll I'll go ahead down and pick the twelve position, and we'll see. Was there an eleven? I do not see an eleven. Well, there it is, but uh, apparently it doesn't come in the two and a half or five amp choice. So let's go ahead and apply filters. We've now got 13, so most of these are going to be the 12 position. So um, again, we'll do the same thing. I'm going to come here and sort by price ascending. And we have uh, 2.5 amp, good, good, that's good. How many, pos 12 positions, 12 positions. Um, 10 positions, so here's the first 10 position is like 736. So you can see that uh, the, the um, arrow site was, was pretty reasonable. All right, so Let's go look at resistors now, and I'm not going to go through all of them. I went back and forth between a couple of sites looking for resistors. but So we'll start out by looking at products, and then resistors are a type of passive component. So passives and resistors, click, and fixed resistors we want, and we want fixed single through hole resistors because those are going to be where the axial leads are. And so now we're coming in here, and we know we have some basic parameters. We want ones that are in stock. We want to be able to purchase them, of course. Um, we want 1% tolerance on our resistors, and we want a 3-watt power rating. So those are kind of our minimums. So there we go. There's 3-watt power rating, um, and then axial. And with those choices, I'll apply. And that pretty much gets us down to 408 different resistors. And now to get the rest, to get what we need, all we need to do is to select the values. And these are milliohms, uh, 15 ohms, so we went a little too far. Two point four ohms. One point eight two, one point five. One ohm. There are 10 of those. And we'll apply. And we should have 10 ohm resistors. And again, we're going to do a sort by price. And so here we see there's a 1 ohm, 3 watt, 1% wire round resistor. Uh, 10 are 59 cents. And then I don't know why these are out of order. It could be because of. Uh, Uh, the price is cheaper when you get down to large quantities, probably. But this one is 51 cents for one and 47 cents for, for 10, excuse me. So for what I would do in this case is I would order the 10 because the 10 are going to be cheaper than, let's just see, than ordering nine, right? It's either going to be cheaper or almost exactly the same, and I'd rather have the extra resistor just in case. So we would do that, and then for the next one, we would clear this filter. And then we can go, once we've cleared that filter, um, we can go and look for 
10 ohm resistors. It's milli ohms. 124 ohms. Oh, just passed it. There's a 10 ohm. And we can apply and it pops up. It's already sorted the way we told it. And here we can see that a wire wound 10 ohm, 1%, 3 watt axial resistor is um, 51 point, approximately 2 cents in quantities of 1 and 47 cents in quantities of 10. So again, I would probably order the 10. So let me jump over to the um, Mauser site and show you how that works um, very similar. So I'm going to go to products um, under uh, passive components. I should find further down. Here we go. Passive components, um, resistors. And then under resistors, I want um, through hole resistors and there are 70,000 to choose from. And we're going to do a lot of the same choices we did before. We want axial termination. We want a 3 watt power rating. We want a 1% resistor. The rest of these I think are fine. We should be able to apply filters. And then with filters applied, there's 1,457 remaining. And now um, we're down to 1,457. Now we can just start selecting our values. So again, the first one we'll look at is 1 ohms. And then I'll apply that filter. Again, we'll sort by price. And now we can see that in quantities of 10 for a Yagio, however that's pronounced, metal film resistor, 1 ohm, 1%, 3 watt, um, 22.6 cents in quantities of 10. And so that's certainly cheaper. So we might want to buy our one ohm resistors here. Um, and then we could, of course, undo that filter for resistance and apply. And that'll return the resistance column to um, the point where we can make parametric choices. And next we'll go and look for 10 ohms and apply. And again, it'll continue to sort by price. And here we can see that 10 ohm resistors in quantity of 10 are 71 cents. So what you need to watch out for though is there are some where it's 79 cents and you can get a really good price break, but we just don't need 10,000 or 2,000. Or, um, so keep that in mind. Um, and watch for that because some of these also there's a minimum buy. Let's see if we can find one where the minimum is fairly high. Yeah, I'm not seeing it here, but uh, here we go. So here are some, and we wouldn't pick these because they're very expensive um, special resistors. But here you'll see the, the minimum buy is 250. So you've got to watch that as well. Anyway, that's how you would do your parametric search. Uh, when I found something I wanted, I would simply click buy, it would add it to my cart, and I could either continue shopping or view my cart like with any um, uh, e-commerce application. So that's how you do a parametric search for some of these components. I showed you two sites. Um, I actually searched a bunch of sites and found the best prices and the components, and those links are in the web page at um, www.theelectronicshobbyblog.com and it's in our resistor substitution box part two. So there you have it. That's our parts. Let's go ahead and place our order and then the next time we get together we'll actually begin assembly of the box. See you next time. Till then, cheers.